In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to show you how to replace the upper control arms in your DB9. Uh, the technique would be exactly the same if you had an uh, Aston Martin Vantage as well. So why on earth would I be needing to replace my upper control arms? They squeak. It's driving me crazy. <clears throat> my car has uh, been a California car. It's an 05 and it's 2018 right now, so it's 13 years old. When I go over bumps when it's cold out, so, you know, 60 degrees or cooler, um, I get a ee, 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 ee. every time I go over like a speed bump or the curb pulling into my driveway and it's bothering me. Um, I've done some diagnosis, which I'll show you in a minute. To, and what I've discovered is that the joint, the bushing in the back of the upper control arm is creaking. It's essentially dried out and it's a non-serviceable part. So you have to change the whole upper control arm. And that upper control arm is located right here. So uh, in the video ahead, I'm going to show you how to get access to it. Um, honestly, this is a, actually a fairly do-it-yourself project. Um, it may seem completely daunting, but uh, now that I've done it, I can tell you this is well within the capabilities of somebody with just some uh, a modicum of mechanical skills. Before I show you which tools and parts you're going to need, I took some really cool um, footage. So uh, I got a couple of shots from inside the car so you can understand what creaking noises I'm hearing. And then I actually mounted a GoPro in the fender well and actually was able to capture the creaking um, from inside the wheel well while driving. So check this out. You don't need too many parts to replace your upper control arms, uh, but a few of them are pricey. Uh, first and foremost, you need the upper control arms themselves. Uh, you can't just get the bushings to replace them, which would be way more economical, but that's not the Aston Martin way. So the, um, there is a left hand, uh, clearly marked in left and seems to be also noted with blue dots, and a right hand uh, part so uh, check out my companion blog article for links to the parts. Uh, and basically, they, uh, this just includes the, uh, constitutes the upper control arm with the bushings, and it includes the upper ball joint is uh, also part, and it comes with this uh, nice little protective uh, cover. Um, optionally, you might all want to order a new set of uh, nuts and bolts that uh, attach the uh, uh, control arm to the car. Um, so uh, I've gone ahead and ordered a set. Um, so basically you would need uh, four of the um, high strength bolts and then you need four nuts to go with those. And then uh, two additional of the exact same nut uh, if you'd like to put um, new nuts on your uh, upper ball joint. So um, you don't have to replace the nuts and bolts. You can try and just reuse your old ones. But I figured if I was this far into the process, I was just going to get all new hardware. It's only a few extra dollars for those. Um, one last thing that you might uh, not think about is that you're going to have to cut some uh, zip tie mounts that mount to the uh, side of the old control arms. And these are one time use because they're a zip tie. So you'll need five per side, um, but uh, these things are uh, really inexpensive. So I just got a bag so I can change my brake wear sensors anytime I want. It's the same zip tie mount for all that stuff. And, um, you know, basically it's just a little uh, fir tree thing on a zip tie. 
Um, unfortunately, you can't reuse them. As you might imagine, we need a few specialist tools to do the upper control arms. Uh, they're not too complicated, but uh, the first one to talk about is we need an upper ball joint splitter. And uh, the Aston Martin workshop manual is really clear about saying you should not use one of the tuning fork kind of pry in and bang away ball joint splitters. Uh, our spindle uh, frames are aluminum and they'd get mangled. So this is one of these pressure style ones where you tighten up the bolt and it eventually presses the, um, basically it presses up on the, uh, the upper ball joint bolt and pops it free. Um, good news is, is this is only like a $10 item off of Amazon and the one I found here works perfectly. It's from GearWrench, so check out my companion blog article for a link to the tool. Um, so you need that tool uh, and you need a uh, socket and ratchet, you know, the right size to uh, uh, tighten up this bolt. Um, you're going to need a torque wrench, uh, so when we put everything back together you're going to need a torque wrench. Um, you're going to need an 18 millimeter and a 15 millimeter combination wrench to um, break free the, um, the bolt uh, that holds uh, each of the bushings together. You're also going to need an 18 millimeter socket um, and a short uh, 3 inch extension when you come to um, uh, torque it back up again. This extension is going to be crucial. So you're going to need a, because you can't get right on the back of the socket, you have to have uh, a three or a six inch extension. Um, you're going to need a pair of side clippers because uh, you're going to have to clip some of the uh, zip ties uh, that mount the wheel position sensor and brake wear sensors to the, uh, the control arm. So you're going to need clippers. Um, you may also need a pry tool to get underneath and pry out the clip from uh, one position on the um, frame of the car. Uh, so you could do it with a couple of different things, but I have this uh, interior clip pry tool, which is kind of handy. Um, an inspection light's always a good tool to have uh, at hand. Um, and some shop rags would also be useful. Uh, you're also gonna need a piece of wood. Probably a four by four would, uh, a chunk of four by four would work better, but a two by four is okay. Eventually we're gonna have to lower the car onto the suspension without the wheel attached because you have to tighten the bolts um, back up to torque spec with the car in its resting suspension position. So you have to basically load the suspension up. So you're gonna need a piece of wood probably to protect the lower control arm when you do that. Uh, so I have a manky old piece of two by four I keep around for that. Um, and you might also want to have a, a little bit of uh, white lithium grease. Um, uh, when I'm going to put the bolts back in, I'm going to coat the, uh, the shafts of the bolts uh, with a little white lithium grease so that uh, if any water penetrates there with car washing and stuff, uh, they're kind of coated up and won't rust out. So um, if you get all your tools together, let's get started. All right, so it's time to get the uh, upper control arm removed. You can see I've done a bunch of stuff already on the car. I've already, um, I've got it up on full jack stands. You could do this just on a single point jack, you know, just with a, keep your jack in the corner and do one corner at a time. But I'm doing some other stuff so I have the whole car in the air. I've also removed my fender liner. Um, again, not technically required, I'm just doing some other stuff. You could have your fender liner in. Um, and I've also uh, removed, obviously, my road wheel and all my braking components. I've got my caliper off, I've got my rotor off. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that either, uh, but I wanted to do that so it'll be easier to see the things I'm doing. I'm also doing a brake job right now, but uh, there'll be more weight. Uh, so you could leave everything attached, but it'll be heavier while you're doing it. So I think you could do it with all the rotors and stuff attached. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, I've got my rotors and brake system off right now. So to get started, um, first thing I have to get out of the way um, are the cables that attach to the upper control arm. So I've already uh, removed the brake wear sensor cable. Um, you would have to cut it loose from the two spots on the side of the, uh, the upper control arm. Um, 
and so that's already out of the way. Uh, on the right hand, on the other side here, um, there is the um, wheel position sensor. This is for the anti-lock brakes and traction control. So um, essentially these are these one-time use zip ties and you're going to have to have some replacements of these. So uh, basically you just snip them. You got to be careful that you don't cut the cable that's underneath because uh, we're definitely using the cable over. And then the connector is just press in and uh, wiggle it back out like that. There's just a, a press connection there and off it comes. And then I'm going to cut the rest of the zip tie mounts. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now this is, and I'm going to tuck this up out of the way so I don't damage it. And uh, if you want to get rid of the old uh, zip tie mounts, they just unscrew. Uh, these are threaded holes on the control arm. And you've got to get this one out of here on the caliper housing. And that one's press fit into the hole. It, I don't believe it unthreads. Oh, it does. Look at, lucky me. So, all right, so I've removed the old, all the zip tie mounts on both sides. Um, there's really just three bolts. Uh, one bolt here, one bolt here, and then the upper ball joint. So we can't undo this one until we can swing the whole assembly back. So now we're gonna go after these. Now these are, uh, it's a 15 millimeter on the inside and an 18 on the nut. Um, and I have a couple of box end wrenches and uh, these are torqued up pretty tight so I'm going to use the old mechanics trick of ch using my 19 millimeter linked into my 18 millimeter just to break the pressure and uh, while we're doing this, I'm going to sh show you the trick if you're going to use a, <laughs> uh, a socket. There's a little cutout in the frame so you can get a socket in here, but you have to have an extension on it. You won't be able to get the head of your ratchet right in there. And uh, the car, this, this is not under load. Uh, basically right now, all the weight's being carried by the uh, strut and spring assembly. It's hanging, so the upper arm is actually gonna be loose. And there you go. So that's one bolt out. Now the other side. With a little luck, yeah, just pushes right through. So, uh, with both those bolts removed, I should be able to grab the control arm and just flop it totally forward. And uh, you can see it's it won't fall completely forward because the tie rod end is still there. But uh, now it's only held by the upper ball joint, and I can. Uh, you know, pivot this around, and uh, um, basically the uh, the nut is inside this little chamber. We're going to have to get a shot from this other, all the way from the inside here. But um, that's what we're going to disconnect next. So in here is uh, the upper ball joint nut. This is also an 18 millimeter, and uh, uh, we'll be cracking that loose, and then we're going to be using our ball joint separator to break the. Uh, ball joint taper fit out of this uh, hub assembly. So um, 
<clears throat> to make our, the job of breaking the ball joint a little easier, we turned the steering all the way to the left. Uh, that rotated the hub, so I got more room here to work. Um, now I need to break loose this 18 millimeter nut. Um, it's torqued up pretty well, so to break it loose, uh, you can try, you know, kind of tight on clearance here, but I'm just going to use a box end wrench and then just give it a couple of, there we go, hits with a hammer. Um, now you don't want to take the nut all the way off. You actually want to just undo it two or three rotations so that it basically the, the shoulder of the nut is just flush with the top of the bolt, uh, the head of the, the threads. There. Um, and the reason we're going to do that is we're going to have our tool press on that, but I don't want to mangle the thread. So, and I also, when this pops off under all this pressure, um, I want the nut to catch it. So there's a little bit of a gap uh, between the bottom edge of the shoulder of the bolt now and the, this. So this can move a couple of, you know, a millimeter or two. So next up, we're, it's time to put our star of the day on. So this is the ball joint splitter. Um, Aston Martin says you should use a special Aston Martin tool. Well, this is exactly what the special tool does, but this is nine or 10 bucks off of Amazon. So <clears throat> this has got a tapered socket and it's designed to fit under the taper of the control arm and on the new one here. It's basically uh, going to slip in uh, under the shoulder without damaging the ball joint. Um, now we're replacing the whole ball joint, so damage really isn't the big thing, but essentially this is going to apply pressure. So we wedge that in there and we're f all the way in and we've got our, the rocker part firmly underneath the, the nut. And I'm all set. So now we're going to basically just tighten up this um, bolt and it's going to pivot that apart, which is going to put pressure up on the bottom of that nut and try and break the taper fit of that ball joint. And it's going to sound scary and it's going to scare the shit out of me when it pops. And it takes quite a bit of pressure usually. Now Aston Martin goes out of their way to say you cannot use the tuning fork type splitter here. Uh, where you're more, maybe more common to see where people take a tuning fork and then wang away on this. This is aluminum and it's cast. This is soft. So if you start doing hitting this with a mallet, it's going to damage it. Um, so you have to use this pressure type splitter rather than a tuning fork. Taking a lot of force now. Scary. <laughs> but that's it. And just loosen off the tool. Loosen off the nut by hand now. There you have it. One properly removed upper control arm. All right, as you can see, I've uh, taken a few minutes and I've cleaned up the sockets on the, where the upper joints go in. I've cleaned up the uh, um, front spindle assembly. Uh, just Basically, pride of workmen should try to make it a little tidier. So we're going to start putting her back together. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to use a little white lithium grease, and I'm just going to lube up the um, socket where the ball joint goes in. Um, more for corrosion protection than anything else. I just want it to slip in nice and easy. Um, and uh, so when it, next time, if it ever has to come apart, it uh, won't be seized up. So I've got my control arm, pull off the protective cover, and uh, just going to gently set that in. It's tapered so it fits, and then I'm going to spin this back around. I've also made sure I'm putting the right hand one on the right hand side. They do only go on one side. Um, I have a new nut, and I'm going to fit the new nut. So the spec on this is 90 newton meters. 
I've got my torque wrench set for that. Um, what I'm going to, you're going to find though, if you're like me, is that there's no really good clear area to swing the wrench. So, uh, I'm just going to work in here in, uh, the space I have available. Should be getting close. And there we go. All right, next up, uh, it's time to fit the control arm uh, up into the sockets. And uh, on, when I've tried this before, I freak out because it doesn't go in. And uh, it's finicky for sure on the angle. So uh, just take your time and finesse it. And there we go, up into space. And now I'm going to take a moment and just apply a little white lithium grease to the uh, um, shafts of the bolts. Um, more for corrosion protection than anything else. So I'm going to, you're not going to be able to see on camera, but I'm going to stick my head in here to try to visually line up the first hole of the one side. And then it's a little bit of wiggle jiggle get it to go through and then what I've been doing is sneaking in with a long screwdriver and just tapping the, uh, the flange of the head to get it to go through to set and then I've got my uh, new nut and you've got to get one bolt sort of in out of the way to make room for the second bolt to fit through. So uh, I'm going to do a quick tighten up then. Got my 15 millimeter wrench. And uh, you can see again the challenge getting a socket in because it has to fit in this little chamber. Now while I'm doing this, I will tell you, we have, the manual is really clear that we are not supposed to torque this bolt up with the car in this position where the weight's just hanging down. The, this bolt has to be torqued with the suspension in this corner fully loaded. Well, you're like, well, how on earth are we gonna get back there to tighten those bolts um, with the wheel on? Well, we're gonna basically put the car together to the point where we can rest it down uh, on a block of wood. And that's what the block of wood was in the parts list. So I'm not tightening this. I basically, I snugged it down and now I'm backing it off. Um, the reason for that is, is that this rubber bush, when you tighten it, we're basically gonna squeeze this flange together and it's gonna freeze that shaft in the center of the bushing that never rotates. And then if we were to do that now, basically the rubber would be, this would be its resting position. And unfortunately, that's what the suspension hanging. You want the resting position to be in the natural position of the car when it's at its normal load ride height. Otherwise, if I locked it down now, it would tweak all that rubber and it would be always tweaked. Um, and then even when you went over a bump, it would tweak even beyond its design limit. So you have to basically lock these down with the car and its uh, resting ride height. So we'll do that a little later. Uh, so now I'm going to fit the other bolt. All right, so uh, now that we have, uh, that's as much as we can do with those bolts till we're back in place. So now it's time to put back the zip ties for the wheel position sensor that's uh, hanging here. And you can see the wheel position sensor has a little bit of uh, tape, um, basically it spots where it's supposed to be mounted uh, to protect it from wear. So that kind of makes it easy to line up. And the trick here is that you need to start these in advance. Uh, so basically I've got that 
started. Let's do the furthest back one first. And they just push in. You don't have to turn them in that because they were threaded to come out, but it's just a fir tree. Now I'm holding the taped area in the center, just below the head of the zip tie. You don't have to make it super tight, it's just so it doesn't flop around. And then trim it off. Start the second one. Push it in. Line up the tape just under the head. Trim it off. And there's one more on the body here. And I'm going to put the clip in first. So my guess is it's the lower piece of tape. There's the band from the last, the old one. Yeah, didn't have it in tight enough. And that's just designed to allow the steering knuckle to turn, give it some slack. Trim this last one. All right, so um, we've got our arm reassembled, our bolts reinstalled, but not torqued, which we can't do until I have the whole car put back together so I can load it up. Um, our sensor is reinstalled. You would do the same on this side by reattaching your brake wear sensor. I just have mine out because of the brake work right now, but same thing, zip ties on this side. And um, so let me finish putting the car back together and then we'll get on to um, loading up the suspension and tightening those bolts. So to get to the, uh, the bolts and the nuts, uh, I thought I could maybe park my car on the curb out on the street and kind of get down in the gutter, but there just wasn't enough clearance for my wrench. So I'm gonna resort to plan B. Uh, I'm gonna put the car up on a set of ramps. Of course, I can't drive onto the ramp, so I'm gonna jack the car up and slip the ramp underneath and then lower the car back down so it's full weight sitting on the ramps. Um, and then that'll give me enough room to get under the car. So I'm underneath the car um, and the car is up on a jack stand and uh, a jack stand, a ramp, um, because the suspension needs to be fully loaded. And you can see um, I've managed to get uh, it's actually more space than you might think. Um, so I've got the 15 millimeter wrench in on the uh, bolt head, and as you get it down uh, fairly snug, it stops turning. So you'll even just be able to let that go with one hand. And then uh, you can see I've got my uh, socket uh, onto the bolt head, my torque wrench set to 115 newton meters. Um, and you have to use a three inch extension because I'm just fitting in that little gap in the um, uh, upper frame rail part that they made so you could get an extension on this. And then uh, basically uh, torque this thing to 115 newton meters. And I don't think I can chew gum and uh, uh, do that at the same time. So um, basically you just do it carefully and uh, wait for your click on your torque wrench and you're done. But at least this way you're um, basically setting it uh, with your suspension under full load. Right. Mission accomplished. I've got my two uh, upper suspension um, control arm bolts tightened to the 115 newton meters. Um, my car is uh, all back together and whole again. There should be no need to do a real uh, an alignment because the uh, there's no adjustability in the upper control arm. Now, if the arms were built out of spec, um, that would be the only thing that would move the suspension around. So. Um, I'm not going to worry about getting a, an alignment done. That should be about it for the project. Um, if you enjoyed watching this video, my newest one will be up above me here. And uh, my companion blog down below here will have links to the parts and the tools and wrenches and torque settings and all that. If you enjoy these videos, 
please uh, subscribe um, below here. And as always, I love hearing your comments, so leave those down below. Thanks for watching.